Hello friends, this is Eli from Mystic Circuits, and today we have another vector synthesis oscillographic patch video for you featuring the wonderful 3DVCA, one of our own creations here at Mystic Circuits. In last week's patch demo, we went over the basics of using 3DVCA for oscillographics. We showed how it can be used to add multiple shapes together, to change the size and aspect ratio of each shape, and also to gradually morph between shapes. This week, I'm going to show you a more complex oscilloscope patch, which involves multiple 3D VCAs, as well as some other modules used in order to rotate a shape in a full circle. I'm going to do my best to go over each portion of the patch individually and to try to explain how to hook everything together, but honestly this patch is fairly complex, so I'm putting a link to the patch diagram below in the description to this video. If you want a more visual way to follow along, I suggest taking a look at it and then uh, comparing that to what we go over in the demo. Let's dig into some rotating shapes with 3D VCA. First, let's show you the shape that we will be rotating. Here we have the mushroom from our peer data patch in last week's patch demo. This one works nicely because it more or less makes an arrow that we can use to visualize our 360 degree rotation. We're going to be doing something that I actually haven't shown before, which is using 3D VCA as a four quadrant multiplier, or a through zero VCA, with the help of our handy voltage processor being the never leaving my synth 4MS SISM. For those that don't know, a through zero VCA multiplies two signals together in the truly mathematical sense, where a positive number and a negative mo number multiply to have a negative output, instead of a normal VCA, which just controls the volume of your signal, and so it cuts off its output once your control voltage reaches zero. In this case, we take the X and Y signals for the mushroom coming from our audio interface, Molt them using our two HP passive molts here, and then send each signal into a channel of the SISM where we can invert the voltages using our attenuverters. Then we can take the non-inverted X and Y signals and send them into 3D VCA's southwest and southeast inputs while taking the inverted XY signals and sending them into 3D VCA's northwest and northeast inputs. Doing this allows us to crossfade the inverted and non-inverted versions of our signal using the Y control, which as you can now see, gradually makes the shape smaller until it's just a dot, and then the shape becomes bigger again until it's full size by upside down from how it appeared before. As you can see, when we adjust the Y knob on 3D VCA, we swap the mushroom head from the top to the bottom of the shape, flipping the shape 180 degrees, which is our first step in achieving rotation. Uh, I'd also make sure that for the rest of this demo, you have both of the 3D VCA's X knobs set to noon in order to uh, not alter the aspect ratio. Now this is somewhat useful in and of itself, but it doesn't give us a good way to move our shape in a circle. As it turns out, rotating a shape 90 degrees involves flipping the X and Y coordinates of our starting shape, which is where our second 3D VCA comes in. I have the southwest and southeast outputs of our first 3D VCA going into the last two channels on our 4MS SISM, and then the outputs of the SISM are going into the sum inputs on our second 3D VCA, the southwest and southeast sum inputs. From there, we have a similar setup to our first 3D VCA with the inverted and non-inverted XY mushroom signals coming in, but we've swapped the east and west channels in order to mimic swapping the X and Y coordinates. So if the mushroom's X channels were going into the northwest and southwest inputs before, now it's going into the northeast and southeast inputs on the second 3D VCA with the Y channel also swapped. And you can see here, we're keeping track of the uh, X and Y signals with the color of our cables. In this case, X is yellow and Y is orange. And if you compare both of our 3D VCAs, you can see the yellow cables are coming in on the western half of our 3D VCA's input square and the eastern half on our second 3D VCA's input square in order to swap the two coordinates. Now, as before, when I tweak the Y knob, you can see the mushroom head flip from left to right. And at this point, we've hit all four of the corners required for rotation. 
but now we need to be able to gradually morph between them. So if I turn up the Z slider on our first 3D VCA and I start to hit the Y control here, you can see that our mushroom will also start to hit some diagonal angles, but it doesn't quite look like rotation. And for some math reasons that I don't really feel like explaining, this is because we need to invert one of the XY channels going between our first and second 3D VCA. So now if I tweak the Y controls, you can see that we are able to hit all four diagonal angles. Now with the inverted signal, you can see we go nicely rotating between all four directions. Um, however, at this stage, you might have to adjust one or both of the Z sliders because the shapes will interact in weird ways in order to sort of change the overall shape. So if I have both Z sliders up, you can see it gets really big and then really small. If I sort of adjust it to taste, you can see um, with it in the center versus in the diagonals, the shape is a lot more similar. Um, you know, this is all well and good, but we don't want to be manually twisting the knobs on our synthesizers like some kind of cave people, right? So at this point, this is where our handy dandy uh, LFO will be rotating the shape for us. And in this case, we need an LFO that has both a sound and cosine output, which is where the fantastic Schlappy 3 body is going to be saving us again. Um, this oscillator has both a sine and cosine output, but there are other LFOs or oscillators that you could use to do that. Um, any quadrature LFO will have a sine and cosine output. Um, sometimes a self-oscillating filter will work if it's able to go into low enough frequencies. You can take the sine from the low pass and the high pass from the, uh, the cosine from the high pass. Um, also, something like immutable tides will work uh, when it's in phase mode because it lets you manually adjust the phase relationship of each output. So you might be able to get some even more interesting rotation shapes. But anyways, I'm going to go ahead and plug the sine and cosine signals into the Y inputs. And you can see here we're already getting some, uh, we're getting the manual flipping. I need to go ahead and also put the Y parameters at their center orientation at noon. You can see we're getting the voltage controlled flipping of the mushroom. Um, now with it being added into the oh, wrong input, being added into the second 3D VCA, going with our sine and cosine outputs of our LFO, controlling the inversion of each of the two orientations of the shape, we're able to get this lovely um, full rotation. Now, I realize that the rotating mushroom example is a little cheesy. You know, I'm trying to break down this patch, show you each different section of it, show it with a really easy to identify shape, easy to tell what the orientation of the shape is, and to take the patch section by sh section, show you how they all interact and how they all add together as an example of this way that 3D VCA is able to enable a sort of more sophisticated oscillographics patch. So. Um, in this example, I'm going to show you something that I would be happy with using it as my own art, but that's still sort of easy to identify what 3D VCA is doing here. Right now I have two of the free running oscillators from the Schlappy 3 body. In this case, I'm using the modulation oscillators on both sides as the X and Y coordinates because we'll be using the main oscillator as the quadrature LFO to rotate our shape since it has the sine and cosine outputs. The modulation oscillators only have the single phase of, for their outputs. Um, so we're using sawtooth outputs and we have them just slightly close enough in frequency that you get this slowly moving line, um, but they are, again, they're free, free um, they're in the free mode instead of the ratio mode, so they aren't perfectly locked in frequency. Um, and that lets us also use our uh, modulation LFO independently. So if I increase the speed of the LFO, you can see the rotation goes quite fast. And uh, in fact, one of the things that you can do using 3D VCA for this kind of patch is if I switch the uh, modulation LFO into audio rate, then we're able to get some really cool 
audio rate rotation of our shape, right? So now I have it so that the modulation LFO is also slightly close in frequency to the other oscillators, or at least it's it's close to a harmonic. And that makes it so that we get this really slowly evolving shape. It sort of looks like, you know, a spider web that's kind of moving or something. Uh, this is the kind of stuff that I personally really enjoy doing with vector graphics. I see a lot of folks doing really awesome stuff. You know, I, I followed uh, Jestern as an example on Instagram. He's always making these really cool kind of like large uh, polygon sort of shapes that are being done with a laser or something like that. In my case, I sort of like to explore these really weird organic shapes. Um, one of the really lovely things that we can do with the Slappy 3 body is because these modulation, these os these three oscillators are all internally routed for modulation. I'm able, to, I'm going to increase the phase modulation of one of the side oscillators to the, um, to the main oscillator, which is doing the rotation. And you can see it starts to get very complex, you know? Okay, so now we've got the real spider going on. And you can see all three of our oscillators close enough in frequency in order to give us this really slowly evolving shape, right? Now I'm going to go ahead and mess with the phase modulation again. It starts to sort of like twist in on itself, right? Try the other side. Now it starts to sort of like oscillate between the two sides. So your oscillographics is going to give you all of these crazy kind of intricate organic shapes, right? So, you know, we only like organic shapes here at Mystic Circuits. You can go ahead and keep your, your artificial shapes, you know. Here our cathode ray tubes only make organic shapes, right? So speaking of organic shapes, I'm going to go ahead and go back into the slower... Uh, rotation mode, right? That's just one example of something that you can do with uh, one of these patches. Now I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to take the plats um, in harmonic oscillator mode. This is sort of my favorite mode for the this sort of oscillographics kind of thing. And I'm going to take it and I'm going to plug both of the outputs into the modulation inputs, the unused modulation inputs on 3D VCA. So here I'm using it on both of the Z inputs, and you can see we're getting these really nifty sort of um, almost like lacy sort of shapes. Something that I find is that with 3D VCA, when you're uh, using the rotation patch with another oscillator that isn't rotating, you get all these interesting sort of uh, interference patterns between the two. You know, they're cross-modulating each other, and you're going to get, um, you know, sometimes it sort of lines up in a way that isn't that crazy, and then other times you start to get all these broken lines like this. Um, I'll go ahead and do a little bit more experimentation with that. Um, because... We're modulating the Z, and what Z does in this sort of context is to change the size of the shape uh, closer to a, a dot in the center. We're going to be getting um, a sort of almost like echoing inward kind of effect where the shapes are going further and further to the center. But if I was to switch the modulation over to the X input, we're getting a different effect, which is that we are... Um, sort of flattening the shape into the x y axes right and so it sort of starts to um show you this cross sort of shape that shows up um but while you're rotating it you can see it actually rotating the axis that the shape is evolving around even though it's a really complex unusual sort of moving shape it still conforms to this X, Y axis, right? And, uh, you know, changing the settings, changing the frequency will give you sort of more or less of these lines to work with. But um, I, I'm, I'm crazy about this kind of stuff. You know, you can find some really fascinating sort of uh, 
complex shapes that would be really hard to do by hand, you know, especially in this animated moving sort of way. So even though this this kind of artwork is very niche, um, there's so many people out there doing stuff with it that clearly takes a lot of time and expertise and effort and in a lot of cases, a lot of math where I, I'm just like consistently stunned by the output that I see. I see people having in this area. So there you have it. 3D VCA has a lot to offer in the realm of oscillographics. This is part of the reason that I tried to keep the panel functions on 3D VCA so abstract. I wanted to be able to use it in a wide variety of applications with minimal repatching, external modules, or having to keep track of weird quirks about it. Really, once you take the time to become familiar with the basic patches and the normalization patterns, it becomes pretty easy to think of these new types of applications that add new functionality to a module that was already sitting there. Please share any funky shapes you make using 3D VCA in your own oscillographic experiments. I want to thank Jerobeam Fenderson and all the folks at oscilloscopemusic.com for sharing the fantastic pure data patches that I was able to use in these examples. Definitely check out the link in the description below. All of their stuff is fantastic. Uh, thanks for watching.